So for this video, I need to explain the abandoned plot lines because showing you these scenes without saying anything out of context won't really work. If I forget any plot lines, that just shows how forgettable they are. So you can just comment them below and I'll pin a comment and keep updating it with like all the plot lines I forgot to put into the video. So for the first abandoned plot line, let's look into Lightbringer. In the ancient books, it's written that a warrior will draw a burning sword from the fire. And that sword shall be Lightbringer. In this case, she's referring to Sans Baratheon because he pulls out Lightbringer. She believes that he's Azor Ahai, but that doesn't really pan out. Lightbringer is a part of the Azor Ahai prophecy, and none of the other main characters ever pull her sword out of the fire. Instead, she just lights a bunch of Dothraki swords. Wow. I've always hated the bells. They ring for horror. If the city surrenders, they will ring the bells and raise the gates. Please, if you hear them ringing the bells, call off the attack. I've never known bells to mean surrender. So yeah, they kind of abandoned the whole notion that the bells are meant for horror. Even random people in King's Landing are saying ring the bells. Who are you? I'm no one. But she is the mother of dragons. She needs true protectors, now more than ever. I bet a lot of you forgot about the mass lady in Karth who basically gives Jorah all the answers. It's never explained as to how she knows everything. The thief you seek is with her now. She's basically just uses a plot device to tell Jorah where the dragons are. The king will have 20 children, and you will have three. That doesn't make sense. Gold will be their crowns. So in the show, it doesn't say how Cersei will God. die in this prophecy. The part of the prophecy that is wrong, however, is the amount of children she has. In the first season, when Cersei is talking to Lady Catelyn after Bran falls out of the window, she talks about her first kid who passed away. I lost my first boy. Little black-haired beauty. He was a fighter too. Tried to beat the fever that took him. I don't know if this technically counts as an abandoned plotline, but the prophecy is still wrong. You are Aegon Targaryen. True heir to the Iron Throne. The whole impact of John being a Targaryen was to just have conflict in Danny and John's relationship. If I didn't know, I'd be happy right now. There is really no other development that came from it. By the end of the season, it is practically just forgotten that John is a Targaryen, and he fucks off and goes north of the Wildlings. So this is a pretty straightforward plotline that was abandoned. The one annoying thing is that they have Bran, who is omniscient and knows everything and none of the characters ask Bran what the symbols mean. They literally have a character that can spell out any exposition they want, and it would make sense, but they just don't use him. Also, the Night King really wants to get down south, but he stops and takes the time to do this. This White Walker region never comes up again, and maybe there are more White Walkers there. Also, the whole baby thing doesn't get brought up by Bran or is ever revisited. It is assumed that they grew up to be White Walkers, but they could have easily shown this in one of Bran's visions. Just... just Mira Reed in general. <laughs> she says she's going to go protect her family from the White Walker attack, and she never ends up coming back for the Battle of Winterfell. Stannis was not the prince who was promised, but someone has to be. I brought up Lightbringer earlier, but I'll make an actual point for the prince who was promised. The last time it was really mentioned was just in Season 7. Horses. 2000. Yeah, there's not 2,000 horses there. <laughs> All the hype that they were going to be a cool badass army in Season 7 kind of just gets ruined. That's disappointing. Three to four seasons of faceless training, and this is the last time that she uses that ability. She even brings a bunch of face masks with her to Winterfell that she never uses. You'll never walk again, but you will fly. I guess this line only applies to ravens, when it's been proven that Bran can warg into other things. His abilities just aren't used in the later seasons, so it just feels like the whole plot thread was abandoned. And now he just kind of stares at people. This kind of goes into the last point, but Bran can interact with the past. This could have had so much potential, but nothing is made of it after the Hodor scene. Maybe Bran was the voices inside of the Mad King's head that drove him crazy, but nothing is really ever made of this plot thread. Dario is basically abandoned so that there would be space for Jon Snow. Everyone thought he would infiltrate the Golden Company, but that never happens. Remind them what happened when Daenerys Stormborn and her dragons came to Marine. The entire plot in Essos is left behind, and there is no update given as to its state after Danny passes away. 
It could very well just have turned back to normal and the slavers are back in control. Robin Aaron was abandoned after Sansa left the Vale. It would have made more sense if he showed up at the Battle of the Bastards with this guy and actually became a character in Winterfell while preparing for the Long Night, instead of showing up at the end looking all hot and normal. Well, the Unsullied being Unix. I found this out on Reddit, but this guy on the right has a pretty big bulge. Last time I was here, you killed my son with wildfire. He then drops out immediately by saying this. There's a path to the left that hugs the cliff. The guards hardly ever patrol it. And that was the only time that Davos ever brought up that Tyrion killed his son. This makes for a pretty massive conflict, but it's never explored. So David and Dan forgot about the whole moment where Jamie tries to kill Danny. She would have remembered this moment, and during the trial of Jamie in Winterfell, she would have definitely sentenced him to death. You can make the argument that Danny didn't recognize him, but if she was half smart, she would have put together that an officer on a horse with a golden hand 15 feet away from her is Jamie Lannister. After the Battle of Winterfell, the whole Lord of Light plotline is dropped. We don't get any answers, and the only thing that the Lord of Light did was just resurrect people. It just felt like cheap plot armor and barely any questions were answered about the Lord of Light. The last point in the whole, like, Lord of the Light story is Melisandre turning into a fucking fart cloud. There's not much for me to really go into here. David and Dan didn't explain the magic at all and it just happens for the sake of having magic as a fantasy element. They even tweeted about how they wanted to downplay that element. If you want to read the whole tweet, you can just pause it. So after Ilaria San dies, Dorne kind of just turns to dust and fades into the background never to be mentioned again. Except during this scene. The new Prince of Dorne pledges his support. Dorne pledged their support, but they didn't show up to the Battle of King's Landing. The Prince of Dorne just shows up at the ending meeting, half asleep and basically just doesn't say anything. The Dothraki just disappear after Danny dies. Jon Snow would technically be their new call since he killed Danny. The only reaction to Rickon Stark dying is Jon staring at his corpse for a solid 6 seconds? Sansa doesn't even bring up that her brother dies, and they don't even throw a funeral for him after the battle. Arya Stark also comes back to Winterfell, and she doesn't even ask about Rickon. They just completely abandoned him after he died. So Cersei blew up the Sept and killed like a thousand people? When she is named the new queen, you can see how dissatisfied and mad everyone is at her, and this never comes up again. They are grateful for your protection within the walls of the Red Keep. What do you mean grateful for their protection? If she blew up the Sept to dodge a court trial, what do you think she'll do if she loses? She has a keen sense of poetic justice. That fucking family. Cersei clearly wants to kill her brothers by contracting one of the best sellswords. Later on, Cersei has the option to kill Tyrion but doesn't because of that hot plot armor. <laughs> So Sam doesn't bring up how his best friend left him to die? That would seem pretty betraying, but they don't go there. If it's a boy, we want to name him John. Also, Sam is going to name his next kid John? What about my boy Ed, who literally sacrificed himself to save Sam? He knows you are here. He'll come for you. The Night King is clearly holding her neck, and she doesn't get a single mark from it. This also counts for a point where Arya forgets to just be an assassin, and she screams at the Night King, so he turns around to catch her. I wouldn't take it, my lord. Maybe they're trying to curry some favor with the new Master of Coin. Have you ever known a whore to turn down gold? They were happy enough to take it when I gave it to them. What did you tell them? I take your two best men and lead them through the back streets, which I know well and open the front gates. Then comes the army. That was for Yunkai, and this one is for Marine. Daenerys' whole attack strategy back then was to stealthily infiltrate cities and take them down from the inside. 
They could have easily done this for King's Landing because Tyrion knows the city inside and out. Where they keep the dragon skulls beneath the Red Keep. Take her down there. Keep following the stairways down, down as far as they'll go. You'll come out onto a beach at the foot of the keep. A dinghy will be waiting for you. So for whatever reason, Tyrion doesn't tell Danny about the hidden entrance, and instead she goes crazy and destroys the city. Ellen Payne just disappears after season one, and Arya's revenge towards him is dropped. Ellen Payne. I can't sleep until I say the names. Then Arya's whole kill list gets heavily downplayed, and instead is contracted to kill the Night King. Come with me. There is not much of a point to this scene. The show brings back Nymeria only to shelf her again and not bring back her pack during the Battle of Winterfell. This is one of the last scenes where Varys was actually being masterful at manipulation and being a spy. You did conspire to kill the Queen's soldiers. We both know the penalty for that crime. How will poor Dom get on without his mother? And with his breathing problem? If I tell you anything, they'll kill me. After this, he basically just becomes a messenger for Danny, and he also becomes the opposite of a spy by telling everyone that he's committing treason. You heard a voice call out from the flames, do you remember? This isn't a major point, but we never find out what the words Varys heard in the flames when he became a eunuch. Should I tell you the name of the one who spoke? Everyone is what they are, and where they are for a reason. Also, we don't really know what happens to the Red Priest after the Long Night. The Lord of Light's whole objective was to kill the Night King, so what happens to the other priests? Do they just go on retirement? Varys informed half of Westeros about Jon being a Targaryen, but none of the other lords ever really bring that up. These men are prisoners. It is not over until the Queen's enemies are defeated. How much more defeated do you want them to be? They're on their knees. They are breathing. If Grey Worm was killing Lannisters who surrendered, then he would definitely kill Jon for killing Danny. <laughs> Cersei throughout the show is always scheming and being productive. It even follows her point of view on multiple occasions, and this gets dropped in season 8, and all she does is stare out windows. What they see is just the end of the Dothraki, essentially. How far gone? The scorpions demolish Rhaegal, and then the episode after they can't hit shit. Although this is at the very end, we never find out where Drogon takes Danny and what happens to Drogon. And Drogon? Any word? He was last spotted flying east to Rather Ireland. away the better. Perhaps I can find him. They just immediately he drop this. I can never be Lord of Winterfell. I can never be Lord of anything. I'm the Three-Eyed Raven. Will you lead the Seven Kingdoms to the best of your abilities from this day until your last day? Why do you think I came all this way? So yeah, that's all the plot lines that I could find and come up with. I wanted to make one big video that grouped all of them together. If you have any other ones that I forgot, then comment it below and have a good day.